All right, everyone, welcome to Sour Horsepower, and today we're going to be taking a look at this 2021 Ford Explorer ST. All right, so as we normally start off our reviews, let's take a look at the key. Here you get the nice ST logo on your Ford. You get the unlock, lock, remote start, your power tailgate, and then your alarm button. Let's take a walk around this vehicle. So I don't have the full window sticker because this is a used vehicle, but some of the options are listed on the paperwork up there, and we'll take a look at those here in a bit. But we got this uh, gray color here. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but you do have the nice ST badge on the front, a very sporty designed front uh, bumper area. The Ford badge seems to have been blacked out by the previous owner. Uh, I got some nice LED lights in here. Let's take a look. Yeah, they look pretty good. Um, these will be your daytime running lights up along the top here. It says Explorer right there in the light. The wheels, let's see what we got here. These are 255, or two, yeah, 255, 55 R20s. Quite, so on this one, you got the silver face with the black pockets on them, so they look really good. You got Explorer again down here on the side. You got some black trim. So the bottom is like a plastic. So here, it's like a, it's like a plastic, and you got some like gloss black trim there. You got the gloss black surrounds on the windows. You got the Ford keypad thing here. I don't even know how it works. Never really had a Ford before. So let's see, actually, let's test it out. So how does this work? Ah, okay, figured it out. So you just kind of tap, and here you get your keypad to unlock it. I'm not sure what the code is, because like I said, used vehicle, but it, oh, this does have, when you lock it, the mirrors do automatically fold in. So it should be like that. Does it, do they pop back out? Maybe once you, probably once you start it. Oh, there they go. Open the door, the mirrors pop back out. So let's keep walking around. Parking sensors down here along the bottom. On the back here, you have a dual exhaust with dual tips. So I'll go ahead and put an exhaust clip in now. So the, as you can see here, this also has a trailer hitch on it. Uh, the tow rating, I believe is about 5,800 pounds for the Explorer ST. Back here along the back, you got your backup camera right here. Some more Explorer across the back. Ford badges sort of blacked out by the previous owner. You got a nice extended spoiler coming off the back, a couple inches. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's very just kind of generic Ford Explorer, but also has a couple of sporty touches to it. The brakes, they don't seem to be any real upgraded. They might be slightly bigger than the standard Explorer brakes, but they're not like a, it's not like a Brembo brake or anything that's on here. But the pads, um, as you'll see in my driving section, are very, very aggressive and they do stop the vehicle very well. All right, so now that we've made it around back to the front, let's go ahead and jump to the inside. We're gonna try and do this all in sort of like one take here today. So here, looking at the door panel, you got some nice soft touch, um, kind of like foamy sort of leather wrap stuff. Some nice silver accents in here with the design Bang & Olufsen stereo in this one. Some, uh, there's your switch gear. Oh, this is actually kind of interesting. I'm not sure if this is factory or not. Not sure, but here's like a knee pad. <laughs> uh, you got deep pockets down here, cup holder. So one thing that is kind of weird, they put a nice sort of bezel over top to Bang & Olufsen here, but then left this as just very soft plastic. You would like to see, especially for a vehicle, the price on this right now at the um, dealer as a used car is $51,000 and some change. So you would like to see, you know, for a vehicle that's over 50 grand for if they're going to have a bezel here that's nice in aluminum, maybe slap another one right there for you. And as you can see here, we're going in Ford Performance on the sill plate. The seats, uh, full leather, ST badge embossed there. White stitching, very, very soft leather, which actually does not help it um, when you want to do some sporty driving because these, these bolsters, you can, you can see, are very soft and they sort of wobble already just by uh, me moving it, not even sitting in it. Steering wheel, um, it's kind of standard Ford stuff, except you get it. ST badge on the bottom, sort of a kind of faux flat bottom look here. 
and then you got a giant all digital gauge cluster there which we'll look at in a second and then the center console here you got a nice sort of iPad looking screen just kind of mounted up there you would wish to see maybe a little bit more integration into the dash um, but it gets the job done we'll take a look at that more in depth here in a bit gear selector here in the middle uh, it's a rotary dial with your manual button GoPro <laughs> turning off so rotary dial with your manual button in the middle you got your parking brake here and then I'm not sure what this is I'm really maybe a trailer brakes or something I'm not too sure I should probably look this up before um, doing a review not too sure what that is honestly if you know put in the comments below what that button is but this is your auto start stop your parking assist hill descent control traction control up here what do we got storage bin you got your 12 volt there and usb and a usb c one thing that is nice about this though put that down there's like a little spot here to hold your key which actually kind of fits in there quite nice let me demonstrate that when i get the key out of my pocket so boom right there fits right in there um moving up you got your heated seats cooled seats heated steering wheel over here it's just heated seats cooled seats your climate controls your radio controls this is going to be for your backup camera i would imagine we'll test that out your parking sensors you can turn them off with that button and then yeah so we got this like faux carbon fiber look on the the trim here it kind of carries all the way around i'm not sure if it actually might be wrapped that part actually might be wrapped it feels like a wrap. I'm not sure if that's standard or not. If you do know, let me comment below if that's standard, but it kind of does feel like, you know, a, somebody carbon fiber wrapped that trim piece. I would guess that it was probably silver, similar to this originally. Up here, you got your standard sunglasses, uh, your light controls, and that's about it. Visor, pretty standard. And then let's go ahead and move to the back back seat here okay so door very similar design to the front some gloss black here your seats uh two captain's chairs here in the second row and then the third row has the rubber mats on it but there's your third row as well we'll go ahead and um try and jump back there so here you push this button and it does folds forward okay that's interesting we're learning as we go here does this fold up oh it just slides up okay so let's go ahead. I'm going to try and maneuver some of this stuff around and I'll get back with you in a second and see how the rear leg room is. All right, so I'm back in the third row here. Um, I don't really have any place to put my feet because um, I can't get both of them under the seat here. And then that seat rail is kind of in the way. So I kind of put it up there. Now, as you can see, the seat is not all the way back. That is how much leg room is back there. I can't really move the seat back any further with me back here. So if you take two inches off there you the back seat will basically be didn't, didn't mean to push that button <laughs> but the back seat will basically be on my knee here and i'm only five eight so um yeah that's that let's take a look for headroom plenty of headroom actually this is part kind of encroaches a little bit on my head but back here you got some lights you can turn them on and off i assume from there Let's take a look back here. What else we got? We do have a cup holder, but the thing is the cup holder is kind of really low. Like your leg will be hitting whatever's in the cup holder. Small mini pocket back here. There is no USB chargers that I see. Yeah, no USB chargers back here. What about underneath all this stuff? Nope, no USB chargers in the back. So that is one thing that um, some of the Grand, Grand Cherokee L's and stuff have over the Ford Explorer. Now as I get up here, ooh, that's a bit of a mess, but we're doing a sort of in one take here. Um, let's move the seat back. Now that's as far back as the seat goes. Now let's see what my leg room is with the seat all the way back in the second row. Very good. Now the seat backs, the seat back here is actually kind of firm. So there is that um, armrest. They're soft. They're soft and comfortable. I'm not sure how 
they don't feel very uh sturdy they kind of wobble a lot um so there's that down here you got the climate controls for the rear your usb plugs there and what do we got here a full outlet plug there what's that say 110 volt 150 watt um, you also have some climate control vents up here, coat hangers, more lights back here. Let's go ahead and open up the trunk and take a look at the storage back there. So, I'm not sure where it is. Let's take a look. Where is it? This room. Oh, ha! Huh. Be smart. There's a little arrow there. Hmm. Smart, Chris. All right. Power gate. This is your storage area back here. Decent amount, probably about, what's that, maybe two feet behind the third row, and the third row is up. So this tab just puts down the headrest. What's this do? Ah, okay, here we go. So left. Ah, so they're powered. I was, like, trying to push them down. They are definitely powered. And then, so you have just left, left and right, and just right. Since there's a whole bunch of stuff there, I'm not going to fold down the right. But there you can see how much room you get with the seat folded down that's probably about five feet maybe four between four and five feet of room between the back shelf here and the back of the second row seat down here oh that's kind of cool explorer lift that up just more storage underneath yep so if we push that we'll come back up all right cool all right and then up here is where you control the tailgate not sure what the lock button means maybe to lock it in a certain position um, but go ahead and push that once you got the forward beep okay kind of slammed down aggressively all right now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start the car up and now we're gonna look at the two screens so that's your startup screen there and let's go ahead and start the vehicle traditional ford chime which i still am not a fan of but it is what it is all right, so I need to get some AC going because it is quite hot out here. Um, but as you can see here, I believe this is, well, this is Ford Sync. I'm not sure which version they're on yet. Like I said, not a big Ford guy here, but I just wanted to take a look at one of Ford's uh, performance SUVs. Vehicle data, collection active. Okay, so I guess they're collecting what we're doing on, on here. All right, so one of the few things I did mention in my driving section, as you'll see coming up, but I wanted to show it now um before we get going here on this uh gauge cluster so here i'm going to mess with the drive modes so you see the drive mode selector let me focus that oh please focus drive mode selector there you go so i'm going to turn it to the right so i'm going to turn it clockwise now watch what happens so i'm going to turn it once one click and then it enters like a drive mode so now watch i'm going to turn it clock oh, come back come back so i'm going to turn it clockwise it went left see now i got to turn it counterclockwise to go right it's opposite i'm not sure why that is i don't know if that's a setting but either way um these are the settings that you can see so let's go all the way over so tow haul far left and then it's your sport eco normal slippery trail and deep sand and snow. So I guess the way I'm kind of looking at it, now that I'm spinning it more and watching it, it kind of makes sense because I'll spin it to the right and it's like I'm it's like the, I'm engaging a switch. So as you switch it to the right, it it's like if you're actually turning this to the right. I guess it sort of makes sense, but normally when you when you're dealing with a dial like here, you'll turn it to the right and it goes right. But over here, it's actually spinning left in the gate in the uh, little graphic here, which is just it. It kind of just threw me off a little bit. So we'll go ahead and just where it's normal. And the fact that you have to spin it once and then spin it again to get it in the mode is kind of annoying. But and it's not very fast to switch. Like I can't just go. Oh, I guess you, you can do that. So th there is that if you know exactly where you're going. Like if you know, I want to go tow haul, just slap it all the way left. Or if I want to go deep snow sand, snap it all the way to the other way. Um, but one thing that is cool, I, I want to point out. When we're in sport, 
here. This is the Sport Dash. So it has like the four-wheel drive split on it. Um, and I think I sh it showed you can go through some other menus there. Did it show some other things? So seat belts, I guess it shows who all has their seat belt on. Intelligent four-wheel drive, tire pressure, your trip, fuel economy, and a calm screen. Why would you want to be calm if you're in sport mode? Don't make no sense. All right. <laughs> but I do like the gauges. They do look very clear, um, very high resolution. Let's go ahead and take a look at this here. This Ford Sync. I've literally never, ever used this before. So there is that. Um, add a device. You get your navigation. So you can make your navigation full screen. Um, you can set home and work. Apps. What do we got here? Apps. It's sort of responsive. Not many apps. I guess you have to find mobile apps. And... Hmm. I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about Ford. So it is what it is. You got to learn some way. And I'm already here <laughs> taking a doing a mini review and walk around to this vehicle. So driver assistance, let's take a look here. What do we got? So we got cruise control, lane keep assist, pre-collision assist, speed sign recognition, which actually gives you, um, I saw it since we're not driving right now. I wonder if I put it in drive if it'll show. No, um, but down here on the left-hand side when you're driving, it shows you like a little speed limit sign. So it um, keeps you up to date on that. Rear view camera. Uh, bliss what is bliss let's go ahead and hit bliss detects vehicles entering oh blind spot okay trailer blind spot trailer sway control cross traffic alert uh, one thing i did want to test and i pointed out does this button just automatically pull up backup camera oh okay so we got actually a 360 camera on this one so the 360 just a front cam the front cam but three views so you got the front bumper and then the two side mirrors and then your 360 there so Okay, that's quite nice. So it's weird that, can you, can you so, th hmm, that's interesting. It only shows the front cam though. It doesn't select, let you select the rear cam. At least I don't think so. Yeah, that's kind of weird. It, it normally would let you select any of the four, uh, five, or how many, ever, um, eh, speak. However many cameras are on the vehicle normally, like, um, especially in the new Jeeps and stuff I demonstrated, they let you, like, click of the zone, and then that zone will bring up whatever camera on the other screen. So that's one thing that Ford could improve on here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, give my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, so here we go. We're taking off in the 2021 Ford Explorer. ST. Uh, this is my initial drive. We haven't even left the dealership yet, so you're getting my complete 100% first experience of driving this Ford Explorer. So go ahead and put it in drive mode. Oh, parking brake. Where's the parking brake? That'll help. All right. So let's see what the Ford Explorer ST is all about. Brakes are very, very grabby. Which is good. It's supposed to be a performance vehicle, right? Jeez. Okay. Wait for this car to go by. First impressions, I mean, everything... Oh, holy crap. It's a sport mode, so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Let me go ahead and do this. Man, it, this is very, very eager to go. The throttle is extremely sensitive even for like a sport mode okay it's holding the rpm at like 3000 now it finally shifted down what do we got here like i haven't even done a walk around of this vehicle yet so you're like i said you're getting my very raw unedited impressions of how this vehicle is let's put it down so your drive mode selector is here in the middle so that's sport, that's tow home. Why? What? Doesn't make any sense. So when you turn it, it like goes the opposite way on the dashboard. I'll, I'll demonstrate that later. A bunch of drive modes. Is there like an automatic mode? Normal mode? Normal. There's a normal mode. Okay. Let's go ahead and drive it around for a little bit because, um, we actually got fuel in this car because it's a this is actually a used car. It has nine thousand two hundred miles on it. 
Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of a loop here. It's sort of a somewhat bumpy road coming up. There's like no steering feel at all. Even in normal mode, it seems like quite eager to just go. Like it's definitely uh, very tuned on the sporty side. We'll go down here, test some of these bumps, see how it reacts to that. Um, and then we'll flip it around and we'll do a couple street pulls and see exactly if this is um, as sporty. Because like the Ford Explorer ST, from what I gather, it's supposed to be more on the I would say probably competing with the standard SRT uh, Jeep. Um, I'm not sure of the horsepower numbers. I'll have to check that out. I would have already told you by this point in the video, but I assume it's probably 400 horsepower or something like that. Uh, three rows. Yep, three rows. So can, can compete with the Grand Cherokee. Actually, wait, no. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. So it's got three rows, which is actually one more row than the Grand Cherokee. So there's that. Let's test it over some of these potholes and stuff. Unfortunately, my other, I didn't bring my other GoPro today because it's actually at home filming other stuff. So, uh, you only get the view of looking at me. Sorry about that. Not the best to look at. But, big dip coming up here in about 10 seconds. And we'll see how she handles that before we flip around. I'm gonna take it at 50, 50 miles an hour. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, the seats could use a little bit more side bolstering, especially if you're talking about it being a performance oriented view. Man, the throttle is so in your face aggressive. Brakes work well though. You can flip around here in this little area here. A little dial shifter. Everything. Now I'm used to driving like my big truck and everything obviously, which has like a lot more delayed response, but I have my Hellcat. So this is even like way more aggressive than even the Hellcat when it comes to just even normal mode. Um, the shifting and the throttle response is just very aggressive. Let's go ahead and put it in sport. test manual mode so we're in fifth gear so manual mode you just press m here on the center downshift it to fourth gear 40 miles an hour and 3000 rpm okay that's ridiculous the shift paddles feel more like buttons than they do paddles. I should, probably should have adjusted my mirrors before I drove, right? Yeah, but jeez, even at six, so that's six gear, right? It just, I mean, it's responsive. If you want responsive, this is responsive. We'll go down another gear. Second gear for 35 miles an hour. So I was trying to wait till red line to shift. So on here it says the red line's about 6,500 RPM. It cut out there at about 6,200 RPM and then just did that awful lurch. Um, so before it e the tack even got to 65, anywhere near 65, it was given out. So now it's in just sport um, and I'm gonna floor it from 50 miles an hour. I mean, it's definitely fast for an SUV. It's definitely not sports car fast, but it is definitely SUV fast. Now let's let's try from a little bit of a standstill here, turning here on this road. Do a really slow roll here. Now I'm just gonna floor it. So what do we got? We're at 10 miles an hour. quick I'll give it that it is quick now these drive modes are really annoying so you have to like spin it right 
you spin it to like activate it and then you have to spin it again and then it goes into it spins the opposite way so now we're in normal and everything's just nice and chill the gauge cluster changes like for every single different mode it has a different screen on here which I'll, you guys probably would have seen already Ooh, dear Ooh, dear guts okay uh, let's test some other things here. What do we got? A whole bunch of buttons everywhere. What is that? I don't even know what that is. I'm gonna have to look some of these things up. But overall, like just cruising around, if you can get over the incredibly aggressive throttle, the steering has no feel. It's just kind of there. You just kind of point and shoot where you want. Um, but there's absolutely no feedback which is kind of notorious Fords and their electronic steering. It just doesn't have any feedback. Like I said, paddles kind of feel like buttons. The seats need more bolstering for it to be considered sporty. Overall though, it's uh, fairly comfortable. I mean, the seats are comfortable. I'll give them that, but if, if you're advertising it as a sporty vehicle, then it should probably have slightly sportier seats to hold you in. Let's flip a flip a u-turn now i'm going to do the same thing that i did uh cars hurry up please i'm going to do the same thing i did before that was a turning circle wow turning circle is actually very 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 good all right so 10 miles an hour normal mode floor it okay so it definitely didn't respond as fast as sport mode but it was uh, still very good. And once it got going, the shifts almost, they weren't as crisp as sport mode, obviously, but they were still um, plenty quick enough. It didn't feel like it was like waiting between gear changes, really. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead and park this up. I'm going to film my review section or, or my walk around section, and then I'll get back with you at the end for my final thoughts. All right, so I pulled it in the shade here um, to get my final thoughts. So overall, um, my initial impressions are it could use some work. It's not perfect. Um, no vehicle ever is, though. Um, I pointed out some of the things that I thought driving characteristics wise, suspension slightly too hard. And I wish that it had more adaptability with the driving modes like in auto or normal mode. I wish it would soften way up sport mode. I wish it would be firm. Uh, steering, no real feedback. Seats are soft and comfortable, but not very sporty for a sporty vehicle. Um, it is quick. I will give it that. It is very quick. 400 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque. Um, I, it is. It definitely gets the job done. And of course, people can tune these things and make them absolutely ridiculously quick. So overall, I will say it is a great vehicle. Is it worth over 50 grand? In a sense, yes, because of the performance aspect. But overall, I it's not for me it doesn't do anything really well like it's not fast enough to give up some of the creature comforts and it's not comfortable enough to sacrifice you know the speed so it's kind of in that blend of it doesn't what's it uh jack of all trades master of none that's kind of what this vehicle is but it uh definitely it has potential so if it's something you're looking for i definitely recommend go give it a drive go drive it around um experience it for a little bit before making that decision but yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like. Comment below your thoughts on the 2021 Ford Explorer ST. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Have a great day.